just trying to create an identity for myself within uh, this movement and what I was doing, even though, at this, like I said before, we were all trying to like, not be uh, known. But, uh, you know, eventually there were places where writers met, uh, writing corners, writers' benches, different places that uh, writers would get together and watch trains go by. first shown in Japan. Um, that's the place where it world premiered uh, and we went there with like 36 people. They had organized this massive thing to Japan which was, which was really amazing because although I'd been to Japan in the military and I sort of fell in love with Japan you know when I was a teenager, uh, I was so excited to go back obviously with all these guys and you know we had a great great time that trip and uh, what I would remember more than anything on that trip was um, how well we were taken care of, you know, in terms of the people who sponsored us. We did go to Red Lobster with Busy B. I think it was Busy B's birthday, as I remember. He was like 16 or something, or 16 or 17. I remember, like, he was way younger than I thought he was. You know, I was like 19 or whatever, but... Um, and it was a very wild scene there. We had everybody from the movie running around these first-class hotels in Japan in 1983. This was before anyone had any idea of what the effect was gonna be. And um, the Japanese had never seen anything like this before. And by the end of the first week, there were already kids like Japanese kids break dancing and uh, scratching records and all this stuff, it, it immediately started to affect the subculture in Japan within like days. We were involved with Fun Gallery at the time, and Fun Gallery had sort of double teamed with the Wild Style trip and organized some exhibition in this department store over there called Seibu. So there was kind of two things going on. There was the hype for the movie, which was amazing. I remember uh, we, we had an outdoor, it's funny, I'm trying to think of where that was in Japan now, because I mean, I go to Japan like four times a year now, but I can't remember where that was in Tokyo, but we had this like open air, you know, outdoor event where we were, we had, I remember Zephyr and I were painting, kind of like backdrop, kids were dancing, yeah, like Freddie and, and some other people emceeing, guys were all dancing. Um, Massive crowd of people must have seemed very strange to the average Japanese kid. You know, these kids jumping around, spinning on their head and stuff. It was the first time, certainly, they'd seen anything like that. And one of the now famous uh, DJs from Tokyo or from Japan, DJ Crush, told me that he happened to just be there one day when this was all going down, and that's how he got inspired to want to become a scratch DJ. 